Today on The Stay at Home Chef, I'm showing you how to make cinnamon swirl bread. This is one of my family's favorite breads. It's great plain, it's great toasted, and it makes for amazing French toast. Today I'm gonna show you how to make it by hand, or you can use a stand mixer, it works out the same way. To start, you'll need two and a quarter cup of milk, I'm using 2%, and you want it to be between 100 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you'll add in two and a quarter teaspoons of instant or active dry yeast. They'll both work in this recipe. Even if you're using active dry yeast, you won't need to proof it. Next, you'll need two tablespoons of granulated sugar, one tablespoon of salt, and three tablespoons of melted salted butter is what I'm using. Then we're gonna start adding in our flour. You'll need about, oh, five and a half to six cups total. So I'm gonna put in a few cups to start and start to stir this mixture together. Keep slowly adding in your flour until the dough becomes too difficult to stir by hand. If you're using a stand mixer, I'd actually just start with five cups of flour and slowly add in more as you need it. You can see it's getting harder to stir. I call stand mixers muscle savers. Once you can't quite stir anymore with a spoon, you'll switch to your hands. You can even transfer it to a clean countertop and work the dough and knead it just like this. You're looking for a texture that's soft and smooth. It'll be tacky, but not so sticky that it sticks to your fingers. How long it takes you to knead it by hand kind of varies by hand strength, but it'll take somewhere around five minutes. In a stand mixer, once the dough comes together, you really only need to knead it for one to two minutes. Then we'll transfer the dough to a lightly greased mixing bowl. I kind of swirl it around a little bit so it gets coated in that grease, and then cover it with a towel or plastic wrap. Then we'll let this rise until double in size, which will take about 90 minutes. For the filling, you'll need four tablespoons of softened butter, and you want this to be soft enough that you can easily spread it on the dough. Then you'll mix together half a cup of either brown sugar or regular granulated sugar, and a tablespoon of ground cinnamon, and give this a quick stir to combine. This recipe makes two loaves, so once your dough has risen, you'll want to divide the dough evenly into two pieces. Then we're gonna roll this out into a large rectangle. What I like to do is place the bread pan at the top of my dough so I know exactly how wide to roll it. Then for length, I go about 12 to 15 inches. You just wanna make sure that your dough is even. Then we're gonna take two tablespoons of our super softened butter and spread it out in a very light layer on the dough. I go all the way to the edges and the bottom, and then I just leave, oh, like an inch of space at the top where there will be no butter or sugar. Then I'll grab the cinnamon sugar mixture and sprinkle half of it onto this first loaf. Once I get kind of this messy layer, I then take my fingers and smooth everything out and spread it all the way to the edges. Then it's time to roll. I kind of take the bottom edge and fold it over and give it a little twist, and that will give you the start you need to then, as tightly as you can, roll up your dough. And then when you reach the end, give a little roll back and forth to seal the edges. Then we'll transfer it to a lightly greased bread pan, and you can see it fits perfectly. Then you'll repeat this process with your remaining dough to create a second loaf. Of course, if you only want to make one loaf, it turns out this recipe is really easy to cut in half, and my website will actually run the calculations for you. Once you have both loaves complete, you'll want to cover them again and let them rise until double in size again, which will take about one hour. When it's time to bake, you'll want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Unless you have a super small oven, you should be able to bake these both at the same time in the center rack for 35 to 40 minutes. 
Once they're done baking, you'll want to let them stay in the pan for about 10 minutes before transferring them to a wire rack to cool completely. Now, technically, you should wait for bread to cool completely before slicing into it, but it's so hard to resist the temptation with this one. So if you want to have yours warm, I'd give it at least 20 to 30 minutes before you slice in. Thanks for watching. You can find the full written recipe in the video description. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow, and check out the rest of my videos where you can find hundreds of restaurant quality recipes you can easily make at home. See you later.